Hey brothers and sisters, it's Francis Santa Rose just uh, coming on. Uh, wow, busy day yesterday. Got a million uh, comments yesterday. I think it was one of the busiest days ever. And uh, I had a plumber come into my house, so I took the night off from work so I could um, so I could deal with the plumber. And then he called and canceled, <laughs> so so I uh, I didn't have anything to do. So I sat around. And I was able to answer pretty much all the comments. A uh, couple of things that um, jumped out at me today when I was praying. Uh, I had a um, a couple of comments, uh, a question about one of my um, one of my friends, Joey Joey Bond is going through it, you know, and um, he's going through it with a uh, with a person who's got a lot of demonic influence. And he was talking about how he was binding and, and casting and rebuking and, you know, doing everything he knew to do spiritually. And there, uh, you know, it didn't seem to have any effect in it, and it should have because we're in authority and, and we're in power. So uh, I went into prayer about it last night and I was praying about it. And... Um, the word that I heard was uh, some only come out by fasting and prayer. And uh, it was incomplete. I, I noticed that when I got it, it was only part of the word. It was only part of what I needed to hear. And I went to bed last night and I meditated on it, it last night and I prayed for more revelation. And this morning, this is what I got. Okay. Um... Remember the story of Jesus. Uh, he had given his disciples authority to go out and do, you know, do works. Well, this is after they returned. And uh, it was a gentleman that had a, I think it was a son or a daughter, I don't know what it was. Was I'm pretty sure it was epileptic. Ep epileptic. And uh, they couldn't cast it out. And they brought it to G brought him the person to Jesus, and Jesus cast it out. And then the disciples came to him and said, "You know, why weren't we able to cast it out?" And he said, "Some only come out through fasting and prayer." Now, uh, I always wondered about that, and uh, I remember the um, the time when I went to a battle on behalf of my friend who had the brain tumor. And uh, at that time in my life, I was probably um, not as much as I am now, but probably at the, my highest point spiritually, I was really, really on fire for the Word. I was digging in. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. God was doing miracles all around me in my life. It was, it was an awesome time in my life. So I was right at the right place in the right time in my life, ready for that. And God did a mighty miracle uh, through it. And what God showed me was, this morning, Joey, and for the rest of y'all that are that will, you know, look, we're going to be dealing with this because the the because as the time draws near to the end, stuff like this is going to happen. And I'm not calling it on ourselves, but it's going to happen more often, and it's going to happen more intensely. So we need to understand this word that God gave me today in prayer, and. The reason that Jesus was able to do that and the disciples weren't was precisely because of what he said. Some only come out by fasting and prayer. See, Jesus was always at that state. He was always in a place of fellowship. Where, look, what's the purpose of fasting? Why do we fast? Well, fast puts your flesh in submission. It tells the flesh to shut up so that your carnal mind isn't running rampant, isn't dictating or controlling you or manipulating you or, or moving you one way or the other. You know, you've done, out, you've done away with all outside influences so that you can enter in spiritually and it's just you and the Lord. You know, it, it's a time of putting that flesh in submission so you can enter in to that fellowship 
with the Lord and receive what it is that he's trying to get you, that, that he wants to show you uh, or, or to get a breakthrough in that thing that you've been, you know, you've been believing for. So that's the purpose of fasting. So when we fast, it's that place of intimacy, that intimate relationship. Well, you know, why would, why did Jesus not have to go and fast to do that? Because he was always in that place of relationship. He was always in that place of fellowship. It wasn't like he was in and out and in and out. He didn't have to go into fasting to do it because he was always there. That's where he maintained his relationship. It was always at that level. And that's what he told me this morning. He said, I want you guys to get into a place where you're always at that level. You're always at the place where you're always ready for that spiritual warfare when it comes to pass. You don't have to run home and, and start a three-day fast. Are you hearing me? Is that good word or what? That's good word. Man, that's good word. When we are prayed up and ready, where our spirit is built. And I'm going to tell y'all, I'm, I'm so sorry for you people that don't pray in tongues because you think it's from the devil because it's not because when you pray in tongues the Bible says you pray to God you pray a heavenly language to your father that Satan doesn't understand and he can't stop and the great thing about it is you can't stop it either because you don't know it you can't doubt something you don't know so it's a perfect language and it's your it, what does the Bible say it says building ourselves up and our most holy faith praying in the Spirit. See, you are building up yourself. You are getting your spiritual uh, battery so charged up so you're ready for the battle. You don't have to go back and get into a fast. You're always in fast mode. Does that make sense? You're always in fast mode. That's what he was telling me today. He says, I need you guys ready for what's coming by being in fast mode continually. Not that we have to fast continually, but maybe, yeah, maybe we even do. Maybe not so much a food fast, but what about a world fast? How about no TV? How about no, no, um, what would be the best way to describe that? Okay, what is the media? Completely run and operated by the Illuminati with the sole purpose of desensitizing us and deceiving us and luring us into submission. How about we fast the world? From now until the time Jesus comes. How about that? What a fast that would be. Because then we've got no garbage coming in to us messing up our heart. You know, out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Nothing comes out of a man's mouth except for what he puts in his heart. How about we do how about we do this, guys? How about we do a joint fast of all of the entire beast system media. Television, radio, even internet, anything that's not scripturally or biblically or or based upon you know the word or the word itself you know uh praise and worship music you know we want we want to put in us uh, uh the bible on cd or you know i mean being be, you know anything that's word or ministry based you know but everything else you know i, I heard um uh, uh somebody was was uh they didn't know him personally, but they knew about a lot about Smith Wiggleworth. And I don't recall if I read it, or I think I read it in a book about Smith Wiggleworth, where they, it was like his auto, not an autobiography, but a biography of Smith Wiggleworth. And they were talking about, you know, Smith Wiggleworth was, was a re, reputed to have raised, I think, 24 people from the dead, witnessed by lots of people, you know, so... He, it, it, he was the most renowned person at that time. Nobody since, you know, since the apostles ever had ever done anything like Smith Wiggleworth. And I recall 
Smith Wiggleworth saying, and I just have to kind of paraphrase it, when he was asked a question about a, a, an event that happened, like a world event, and he was like, I, he had no clue what they were talking about. And they're like, how can you not know? I mean, it's all over the paper. It's, 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 it's all, over, you know, everybody knows. It's the news of the news. It was a, you know, maybe it was World War I starting. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. I, I forgot exactly what year he was born and what year he died. It, I think it was the late 1800s until the, uh, the 1940s or 50s or something like that. Anyways, and he said, he said, I don't have a clue. I, if it's not in the Bible, I don't put it in me. I don't read newspapers. I don't listen to the radio. If it's not my Bible, I don't put it in me. And that's how he was able to walk in those, in, in the gift of prophecy and the gift of miracles, because he was always at that fasting level. And that's where Jesus was. And that's what the Father was telling me today through the Holy Spirit, was we got to be at that place where we're always at that fasting level so we don't have to run home and fast when we got to deal with something so so we can rule so we can reign so we can walk out this walk as authority as the perennial authority here on earth we've got to be ready we got to be ready guys I'm telling you, this thing's going to start to snowball real fast. It's going to get out of control real fast. Um, so I want to encourage you, get in fast mode from now on. Just be in fast mode. Just be in fast mode. Turn the radio off. Turn the TV off. Unplug the darn thing if you have to. You know? Do whatever you got to do. And you know, and I know the thing about it is it's hard. I've got a family and I can't make them do it. So what I'm planning on doing, and I just talked myself into it just now while I'm doing this, um, is I'm going to, uh, oh, oh my gosh, I just remembered a dream that I had. You know, I told y'all I don't dream. Oh my gosh, listen to this, y'all. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I don't dream. Okay, I, I, I'm not going to say that. I do dream. I just don't dream very often. I don't remember. If I do dream, I, you know, I could dream all the time and I just don't remember them. I had a dream that I was... Oh my gosh, it was about a year ago. And I was asking my father, should I fast? Do I need to fast? Because I was going, you know, I'm going through it. I've got a, I've got a thing in my life. I've got a, a, a loved one who's fallen away, and it's, it's, it's breaking my heart. I mean, it's just breaking my heart. I'm devastated over it. I'm absolutely devastated. And, um, and I was asking, do I need to fast about this? And I just, he just brought this dream to my memory, y'all. I walked in my bedroom and the TV was on and I heard the Lord say fast from that it wasn't a food fast I hate <laughs> I, 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 if anybody's watched my videos you know the stories that I have about you know the Lord told me one day you'll fast and I was driving down the street going to you know the hospital that time about my friend for my friend who had had the brain tumor and I was driving with my wife and I said, uh, no, I won't. <laughs> you know, because I have that kind of relationship with my father. I mean, I, I didn't do it, I'm not rude. He knows that I respect him and I honor him and I revere him. But I, I, it, I just said, no, I won't. Because in my head, you know, because the father, he knows our thoughts. So it's not like... It's not like you can think things and he doesn't know it. In my head, I mean, out of my mouth, the words were, no, I won't. In my head, it was, come on, you, you, you know I don't like to fast. You know I like to eat. Uh, you know, you, you know, you know, daddy, you know, come on. And I heard, the, I heard a voice say, you will fast. Now, my wife is sitting next to me, listening to me have this conversation. She doesn't know that I'm having a conversation. She's just listening to the words come out of my mouth. And I say... Father, I, well, I didn't even say Father. I said, look, I, 
I don't fast. I will pray more than anybody. I, I will stand in faith more than anybody. Nobody in that place is going to have more faith or be more faithful than me in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. And, and, and my wife is like, who are you talking to? And, you know, no one, don't, I got, don't worry about it. <laughs> and, and, and he said, you'll fast. And I ended up fasting because, you know, I mean, you got to hear the testimony. It's back in my um, message, Angels and Demons. And I'm telling you, it is a killer lesson. There's, it's seven parts. It's so awesome. And uh, you, you got to listen to it because I, <laughs> I tell how he, he's told me, he said, I told you you'll fast. I mean, it was really funny. So, um. So I was asking the Lord, should I be fasting? Because I had been praying about this thing for a couple of years, and it was getting worse, not better. And uh, and 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 I and in the dream, I walked in my bedroom, and the TV was on. He said, "That's what you'll fast." And he didn't say it, but I felt it in my spirit. It was media, to fast the media. And how about this? It'd be one thing if the media was a um, if the media was just a bunch of garbage, but it was innocent garbage run by a bunch of people that were really just opportunists looking to make money and sell their products or, or, your, or get their TV shows watched so they could sell products so they could make money. But that's not the intent of TV. You know, the, the Illuminati, they run everything. And the TV has a very sinister motive. You know, all TV, all news, it all, you know, if you think that it's just pie in the sky, sky stuff that's out there and, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's got a little bit bad content, but, but you're wrong. Everything is scripted. Everything. They've been doing this to us for decades to get us to the point where look what's on TV. It's vile. It's disgusting. It's all designed to usher us into the new world order. It is. It is. So even if it was just innocent and wrong, but innocent, we should fast from it. But considering what it really is, it's a propaganda tool of the beast system oh my gosh now that I think about it we should never watch TV ever I mean never ever ever should we be watching TV should we be putting anything in us that has anything to do with that beast system because that's what it is it's the beast system in revelations i mean you either believe what's happening or you don't you either know we're in the last days or we're not and if we are it is what it is right oh my gosh that dream i oh wow that's kind of cool great revelation today I hope y'all are with me because I'm sitting here just going, my whole spirit is just going, it's jumping all over the place. My mind is now trying to shuffle back to all these other things and figure, I got to figure this out. I may come back with another video tomorrow. I don't know. All right. Now, um, so we got that. We got that. We want to be in a place of a continual fast. And I believe it's a fast of the media, not necessarily a food fast. It's a fast of all of the entire beast system media that's been designed. It's just propaganda to desensitize us. Man, that's good word, guys. That's really good word. Wow, that's powerful. That's huge. If we get nothing else out of today's uh, lesson, that. That is it. And that may be just it. <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to go anywhere else. Although I do have a bone to pick with... Maddie, <laughs> I I followed your um your comments. You were talking to one of my subs, who's awesome. I mean, the who was the gentleman who was responding to Maddie? You did an excellent job. You were kind. You were uh, uh you showed authority in what you understood and knew, in confidence in it. But you did it out of love. Great job. 
I mean, I didn't feel involved. I didn't feel led to get involved at, at all because I thought you handled it perfectly. I mean, I, I did. You know, listen, Maddie, I want you to understand something. I know how you feel, but I want you to ask yourself a couple of questions. Number one, either what you are learning in your how do I want to put this in your religious judgmental denominational the word I'm looking for it'll pop in my head a uh, 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 system of uh, faith that you've latched on to or what I'm telling you is true that you're a child of the Most High God that you're an heir to the throne that you're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus and everything in the world has been put in subjection under him under everything is his footstool and because we're seated with him it's our footstool and the word means that we are masters of those things or in complete dominion over them and how many times do, does the word say we have dominion we're in authority Jesus said I give you authority so it's not like I'm making up a word I'm quoting the word. You don't believe the word that's quoted that I'm saying is for us. I'm sorry you don't believe it. I'm sorry that you learned unbelief. I'm sorry that your pastors are so afraid of the truth, afraid of looking bad. See, this is what the carnal mind does, Maddie. You don't believe in healing? Because your carnal mind tells you, well, what if it doesn't happen? You'll make a fool of yourself. You don't believe in the in 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 the word. You don't believe the word. Jesus said, "I give you authority." Yet you chastise me because I'm telling the people they have authority. How dare I teach the people what Jesus said? But let me put it like this, Maddie. And I think I've done this before. Why does this even sound familiar to me? Let's look at it like this. You have. On one hand, oh, I know I've done this before. Let's do it again. On one hand, you have a professor at college who's espousing all his, his socialist propaganda. Why is he a professor at college? Because he never made it in the business world. Why? Because none of that stuff works. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. On the other hand, you have a businessman that knows that stuff he's teaching doesn't work. And he's a successful businessman doing what it takes to succeed in business. See, on one hand, you have philosophy and theory. On the other hand, you have a guy that's made it work by practical application. He knows what works. He knows what doesn't work. Which one are you, Maddie? You're the professor. You have all your theories and all your philosophies, but none of it makes any sense and none of it's ever been put to use because you don't have any faith to, to, to stretch it out. I'm the businessman. How am I the businessman, Maddie? Well, have you watched any of my videos where I, where I walk around and the power of God heals people and I take authority that you say I don't have, that I'm deceiving people with? When I cast out demons, when I command the, the, the spirit of pain to go, and all of a sudden the pain goes? Let me see. On one hand, we've got your theory. And on the other hand, we've got actual miracles and evidence and proof. Hmm. Gee, Maddie, why do you keep choosing the professor of theory and lecture but no power? You know, what did Paul say in Corinthians? Second. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says, But I, brethren, when I came to you, I didn't come with flattering words like the professor. I didn't come with marvelous speech and lectures like the socialist 
communist professor feeding all his college kids with muckety muck that doesn't mean diddly squat I came in power and authority performing miracles in the name of Jesus I don't know Maddie I don't know gee we got you over here do you have any miracles going on at your church do you see people getting healed you know anybody that's been healed of lung cancer? I do. You know anyone anyone that's been healed of brain cancer? I do. Crushed feet? Broken this? Yeah, I, I can't even list them all. There are so many. I mean, I only just started filming them, and I've got, you know, bunches of them. Do you have any? Do you know any? So let me ask you, where's the power in what you're talking about? Because the Holy Spirit is like dynamite, the Bible says. He moves with power, like Paul. So um, I guess I could choose to believe your professors, or I could move like Paul and walk in the power. And you know what, Maddie? I'm sorry for you. I'm so sad. I'm so sad for you. Because I choose to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. It must be a miserable experience. It must be just a, an absolutely terrible and miserable thing for you to have to get on my channel and listen to me and, and watch the videos of all the healings and see the power and hear the testimonies. Oh my gosh, the testimonies. Blue, you're awesome. I got so many people commenting in saying, you know, I prayed for this person that got healed. I prayed for that person that got healed. You got any of that stuff going on, Maddie? You got any subs over there healing people, laying hands on people that, that the Holy Spirit is working like through like a conduit? Do you have anybody? Do you know anybody? Because I do. So let me ask you, Maddie, who are you going to believe? The professors or the power of the Holy Spirit? I know about me. I'm going to follow the word. I'm going to follow the power. You know, I learned under a guy who walked in miracles all the time. Everywhere he went was a miracle. And then I also recall preachers that used to say that he was no good. He, you know, what he was teaching was wrong. Yet they did no miracles. And I watched this guy do miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. We would pull over to the side of the road. He would get out of his truck. And, and I'd be like, well, what are you doing? Where are you going? And, and he'd, he'd lift up his console and he'd pull out his wallet and grab a fistful of money. He'd just grab it, not count it out or anything. Just grab it and run over there. And there would be a homeless man. And he'd, and he'd be giving him money and say, if you, if, if you let me give you this, I'll give you this money if you let me pray for you. And he'd pray over these people and they'd be sitting there crying together and stuff. And, you know, he, they, they'd get healed from, from an injury or an ailment or something like that. I mean, this guy walked like this. That was my example, Maddie. What's your example? What do you got? What do you got working over there? You see any miracles? Any, anything going on? That's what I thought. So you keep following your professors. You keep following them. Nowhere. No power. No miracles. No Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like any fun to me. Form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Yeah, I know that spirit, Manny. I know it well. I know it well. And all I can say to you is, man, I'm going to pray for you. Because it must be really sad for you to be in that position that you're in, holding on to your doctrine while you're watching the power of the Holy Spirit perform miracles. Because I know, I know, I know deep down in your heart, you want this. You want to be able to go out and pray for people and watch them get healed. You want it. What do you... Stop kicking, what is it, kicking at the goads? <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, Maddie. Submit. Submit to the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I don't say anything that's not in the Word. I'm not telling you anything that the Bible doesn't say. We were made a little lower than the angels. 
we were put in authority and, and, and power over all the works of the Father's hands. You, you, you know, can, can you interpret it in a different way? I mean, it's the word. I'm quoting the word here. So anyways, that's it, Mandy. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now, Mandy. You want this and you know it. Come on. Pray about it. Pray about it, Manny. Why do you keep coming and watching my videos if you don't believe them? What, just, just, what, what are you, a troll? You're not a troll. Manny, you're not a troll. You love Jesus. So what are you doing? Why do you keep coming on and watching them? I mean, why even waste your time? My videos are 40 minutes long. Doesn't even make any sense. Come on, Maddie. Come on. You know you want this power. You're a child of the Most High God. You're an heir to the throne. Stand up. Rise up, Maddie. You don't even realize who you are. Maddie, you've got an identity crisis. You've got an identity crisis. So, um, nobody even mentioned the joke I told the other day. I thought that joke was hilarious. I, nobody even said a word. I thought it was funny. <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, uh, I think I'm out of things to say today. But I got another message coming. I've got to tell you that thing that I got to tell you. And, uh... Uh, I had to go into um, my research to dig up some stuff that I, I wanted to um, confirm. And uh, uh, God has really put it on my heart to teach something. And it's about events that are coming up in the very near future. So uh, I'm going in to get a workout. I have been in this parking lot for, it's 12.30 my time right now I'm central time and I think I got here at 8 30 so I've been here for four hours praying well three and a half hours because I've just done a 32 minute video 32 minutes normally it's 41 the 41 streak is broken no normally it's 41 minutes and uh, the 41 minute streak is broken because I'm pretty well done I, I can't think of anything else I want to talk about I was writing stuff down though. What is it? All right. That's it. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.